Hi everyone, it's Friday, so that can mean only one thing. It's GCTV Live Friday time. And of course, we have a special show lined up for you. Today's guest is Ronnie Johnson. Ronnie started his career as a child actor in films such as Oliver and A Hard Day's Night, which incidentally featured the biggest, most successful and influential band of all time. No, not them. Them. And he went on to become a guitarist extraordinaire, working with the likes of Georgie Fame, Van Morrison, Sting, Bob Dylan, Joe Cocker, and many more. Hello, Susan. How lovely to speak. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for coming on the show today and chatting with us live here. Thank you for having me. It's great. <laughs> so, Ronnie, how on earth did you get into acting? It was um, uh, kind of a strange thing, really, Susan, because um, uh, 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 this guy, Richard Lester, was kind of uh, looking for people and um, uh, he, he gave me a reading and, uh, and he gave me a job in a film called The Knack. Uh, and um, then he, 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 he said to me, um, uh, well, you can have a, uh, I'm looking for someone to be in a hard day's night or wasn't a hard, you know, excuse me, in the Beatles film. And, um, but he said, I think you're too young. For this. So yeah. What age were you, Ronnie? I was six, yeah. Oh my goodness. You were six. That's yeah. insane. And what was it like? Oh. I mean, what was oh it like God. working with the Beatles? What was that like? Oh, um, uh, they were marvellous. They were, uh, seriously, Susan, they were marvellous. They were really, really nice people. Really nice people. Yeah, wow. What a, what a memory to have. And um, did I also hear during your acting days that you worked with Ronnie Barker? I did indeed, yeah. Oh, what was and, that? Uh, and, the, and the great Ian Carmichael. I worked with him as well, yeah. And did, um, did you learn Ronnie, anything from them? Oh my God, Ronnie Barker was hilarious. He, um, uh, we did a, a particular thing. I think I was riding a bicycle up and down a, a, a thing, and, and he, he kept saying to me, "Have a look at this. Have a look at this." You know, and he said, "That's not funny. That's not funny." So we did it time and time again, and he went, "That's not funny." And then about the fourteenth time, he said to me, um, that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> With a completely straight face, you know. And I went, oh, thank you, Ronnie. Yeah, that was lovely. That was lovely to hear that. <laughs> uh, what age were you roughly when you had these experiences? Oh, probably then I'd have been about 12 or 13. Yeah. Well, you know, when we were going through some of these pictures earlier, um, the guys were showing me a few, and I noticed there was one of you... Um, and just you as a boy and there was two other boys in that photo and who was it you mentioned was one of the other boys in that photo yeah i think we have right. that here again uh, oh well well the guy on the right was a guy i went to school co with called uh, gerald toomey uh, and, but the boy on the left with the uh, glasses was um uh, he was terry i can't remember his surname but he was um uh, he was the milky bar kid <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, which was really famous at that time, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm thinking everybody watching, they must know who the Milky Bar Kid is. I, uh, <laughs> I'm surprised. Well, I wouldn't surprised. be so sure. Yeah, but, <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, so was that, what was the probably the best moment in your acting career? Like, so was there anybody you worked oh, with? Oh, definitely working with Ian Carmichael in Bachelor Father. It was amazing. It was a, an amazing experience. Is that he the, the man was a genius? He was incredible. I can't tell you, you know. And he used to coach you all the time. He was an incredible man, incredible. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! And so, well, some people might say, "What was acting's loss was music's gain," because you transitioned into um, becoming a musician. How did that happen? It was a, a weird time in terms of the fact that, um, uh, unlike today, um, 
if you were doing comedy as a kid, you couldn't be taken seriously as a musician. You know, everybody was like Jimi Hendrix and, you know, those really famous, really cool people. So you couldn't be on the telly and, and, and then play the guitar. <laughs> think we were a Burke, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, so what was your first then sort of, I mean, I, we have actually, I'm going to show the guys, we have a very funny clip here of you. Um, I need to get the guys to put it up. I think this was you playing with, uh, I think it was on German TV actually, and you were playing with uh, Georgie Fame. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I think I think we might need to have a rerun of some of that. I mean, Ronnie, can you talk us through that hairstyle? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've said that. I know. God, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say, Susan. You know, my word. It's like a um, uh, hair today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, you know, I think there was uh, somebody similar at Crufts. <laughs> Thank you for that, darling. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! You know, fantastic, fantastic. So, you, of course, um, for a large part of your career, played with Van Morrison. So, I wanted to talk about that for a minute and. Um, you know, when we were doing a little research on Van Morrison, something that seems to come across a lot uh, from journalists is this uh, perception that he's a little grumpy. Um, and now he has, I have a quote here um, from him where he said um, basically that, uh, that it was just lazy journalism, you know, that he, he's not, he's not um, that serious guy at all. It's just lazy journalism. So what, what was he like to work with? Well, testing, because we were really, um, uh, really, really, really passionate about what what we were doing, you know. But I, I also have to say that yeah, he was very funny. He was very, I liked funny, very funny. I liked him very much. He he's got a great sense of humour. I that, liked that, him very much. Yeah. That's so interesting because he he, he says that he has a good sense of humour. But that journalist, you know, basically it's just lazy journalism. So that's really no, no, no. No, what happened with, with that, Susan, which was really odd, was that people were, were writing books about people. There was one guy who was writing a book about him and, uh, and, and he had his PA ring me up and say, what have you got to say about Van, you know? And I went, well, oh, my God, you've just had a fortune. To write a book about him, do you think I'm going to a tell you? But b m most importantly was I uh, really, you know, I mean, you don't. What, I, I, he was a great guy. I like him very much, and I, I, don't, I don't mean that, you know. I really like him very much. Yeah. A particularly uh, memorable moment on stage that you can. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, probably about. I think I did about 500 gigs with him. And so there was probably 300 gigs that were great, you know. Wow. And, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, it was a, a marvellous experience for me. Really marvellous. Yeah, and, um, yeah, he's a lovely bloke. He, he, you know, he's, he's, you know, people, but he's a lovely man. He's a lovely, generous man. I mean, when yes. you say when you said you maybe did about five hundred gigs, so were you literally touring the world? Well, no, we'd only go to uh, um, the same places: America, Europe. We'd never go anywhere different. Yeah, yeah. We'd always go back to the same places. 
But it must, I mean, it must have been pretty tiring on the road, you know, doing that. I mean, I was wondering, I wanted to ask you, you know, maybe for anybody out there who's, <laughs> th <laughs> who's thinking about having a career as a musician or, you know, or maybe a start of that, like, what are the special skills needed to survive a career as a musician? Um, uh, probably being mentally ill does help. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's um, uh, uh, what, one of the greater things of doing it was um, uh, uh, the fact that I travelled the world where I never have, would have been anywhere, you know. I never, you know, probably been to Spain on holiday, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, San Francisco. Without a doubt, San Francisco was wonderful. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. we have we ha we have a question here from um, Eugene. He's uh, he's asking here uh, when you saw Van Morrison making loads of money and his name becoming famous. Did you think that's what I want, or did it never seem important? <laughs> Thank you, Eugene, for that question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, 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 I've always preferred Fulham doing well. Money. <laughs> <laughs> that was always that's the most it. important. That's a nice question. That's a nice question. <laughs> that was always the most important. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, we have another clip that we want to play for you now, Ronnie. Um, now, the clip's not great quality, but I want to see if you remember this, um, this gig. So we're just going to get this clip up here for you in a second. And... Um, See if you recognize anybody in the clip. What the keyboard player? <laughs> yeah, who is that? I, I don't know. The keyboard player is pretty weird. <laughs> 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 it's my dear friend Peter. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, first of all, when I saw this clip, I thought that the two of you were just like loving lovingly looking at each other but then when you look at it quite closely you realize the two of you are just in fits of laughter so you're obviously having a great time on stage <laughs> and uh we do have a bit of a surprise for you because as yes as we as you know our uh, co-founder is um peter stone who was the keyboard player on um, stage with you there and he is actually, uh, I know you thought he was on a plane today, but he's not. And he's actually popping into the studio right now to say <laughs> hello. <laughs> oh, my God. What's he going to say about Johnson? Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 Peter, this is like this is your life. Dude. Hold it right yeah, there, yeah, yeah, Ronnie like, Johnson. You do oh tonight. My God, it's him. It's him. Yeah. Bring back some good memories. Oh, everybody. I can't loves remember Peter. most of everybody, them. Everybody, everybody loves Peter. Everybody <laughs> loves, him. especially my younger son. Everybody <laughs> loves Peter. Yeah. Oh, Can you just clarify that statement, Ronnie? <laughs> everybody loves Peter. Everybody loves. Peter. How is George? Well, he's 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 gonna really be packed off. He's missed you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Send him my love, buddy. Yeah. Go. So, what are you up to, mate? Well, How did Susan, I, uh, get you doing this. Yeah, we're doing some different things. Um, Susan, what I got to tell you here is, um, uh, if you'll excuse me, was um, uh, I, when I got into composing for TV. Uh, Pete was not only instrumental, but uh, he was marvellous with helping me. And um, Peter is a uh, an absolutely fantastic talent. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So it's I mean, likewise. He's an Everton supporter, which makes it worse. Yeah. <laughs> And I beat Fulham the other day. Yeah, but, no, I know. I wasn't going to bring that up. But speaking speaking <laughs> of some of that, I, I'll just tell the guys at home. You know, you did. Uh, you moved on to um, from uh, actually in-house composing music. You were based in Pinewood Studios then, 
Um, and one of the very successful shows that you worked on was Charlie Bear, if I'm right in. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and you know, Pete really helped me with uh, doing that. Pete's a marvellous talent. And, but how, how was I was going to swear then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Did, Ronnie, that's uh, usually swear words are associated yeah. with me anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I've got one very similar here. <laughs> no swearing. <laughs> oh my goodness. But so how was that transition then, like moving in from, because um, obviously Peter, had, you had worked a lot between um, advertising, film, TV work uh, for you know quite a long time. And I mean, how did, well, I say I can ask you both that question, how that transition from literally, you know, being a touring musician to actually being in a, um, in a in a studio or in a in a, a more of a, a production environment creating music for tv or film um, me or pete yeah well either both of you both ah well experience. you know i i mean i from my point of view uh, i i cannot tell you how helpful pete was with me and um uh, the unfortunate thing about pete and i is piss ourselves laughing when we ever see each other, <laughs> which is great. But Pete's a, uh, Pete's a monstrous talent. He really is a monstrous talent. And um, uh, and I uh, thank him. Uh, that Ronnie, that's, I'm going to get your eyes. Eyes. He's a monstrous talent, really monstrous talent. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Go on, your turn. Yeah, come yeah. on. Give, give some love. Yeah. Ronnie's <laughs> not only a monstrous <laughs> talent. But <laughs> there's no words. I have stop no it. lexicon. Stop it now! Stop. <laughs> I think this is the love that we were seeing I, I, on stage. I would like to say so, a couple of things because uh, Ronnie and I have had a, a lot of uh, awful fun together. <laughs> I think we can. All there was a that. time when um, <laughs> Ronnie would come down to the south of France, and I'd I'd deliberately get him in, involved in all sorts of crazy projects like. Uh, an advert for Polish jam and I mean God knows terrible stuff I mean you know TV classics not and uh, but the thing why I, I learned rapidly early doors that if there was a kind of four day time sort of criteria you actually had to go back to the director and say look I'm going to get this fabulous talent called Ronnie Johnson in it's just going to take twice as long because we'd spend the whole time laughing. <laughs> but you got the job done. Yeah, we always got the job done. That was never in question. And I think part of us knew whatever happened would always really deliver. And so we probably had this internal game going on where the two of us would keep pushing the line to... Uh, you know, to, to just keep laughing until the point where we absolutely had to deliver something or else we'd be in loads of trouble. Yeah. I'm ashamed to say I agree with you totally. <laughs> 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 no, uh, Pete's a monstrous talent. He really is a monstrous talent, with all due respect. <laughs> just a monster. Well, I, wa I wanted to say to... to <laughs> yeah, he's a monster as well, yeah. Don't go to the pub with him, yeah, otherwise you're in trouble. Oh, <laughs> said the man who has brandy on his cornflakes. I will... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I was, I was going to say for the guys who are watching, if anybody, now the two of, them are, two of you are here right now, if anybody has any questions for you both now, it's a good time to ask them. Before Peter has to rush off again, so um, I don't know if anybody has anything they would like to ask. Um, well, oh, you can't ask that one. There's a. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, well let's just say I think it's one of your friends. What was your most memorable moment on stage together? Oh, what me and Pete? Mm. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I oh actually God, remember of this. when he kissed me. <laughs> <laughs> I actually remember it was like the Britney Madonna moment. <laughs> no, it was I, that bloke playing the flute, wasn't it? 
Oh. <laughs> that was that was memorable. <laughs> Frank. Frank Mead. Yeah. Frankie <laughs> Mead, Frank. yeah. Hello, Frank. Oh no, I remember. I remember actually the exact time it was. It was be we were about to play at Liverpool Echo. And um we were kind of didn't know what what to quite to expect. And I think we drew lots and I lost. So I went out kind of side stage and had a look through the curtains and I almost swept myself because of the the average age of the audience, which was sort of baseline menopausal, frantically crazed, uh, predominantly female, <laughs> rabid <laughs> ladies. <laughs> and I remember coming back to you and telling you, and you couldn't believe it, and then you had a look, and the two of us were kind of holding on to each other to try not to <laughs> fall over. <laughs> <laughs> That's not quite on stage, but it I was pre-stage. I do remember that. Yeah, I know. The, I the, do remember that. We, we have another question coming in about the best gig. What was the best gig? Um, what was your best gig, Ronnie, that you think you ever did? What, with me and Pete? Or, uh, no, yeah. I think just your best. They don't, the person has have we done a best gig? So I think it's just what was, I, I think you can just answer it like, what was your best gig ever? Um, playing with my son in Germany with Joni Sol, oh, uh, with that wonderful players. Uh, you're sat next to your son and you start playing, um, he starts playing uh, the intro to um, uh, uh, da, 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 Refuge of the Roads. And you're going like, and, uh, ooh, he's pretty good. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we'll no, he's, a see... he's a wonderful player. All those guys in that band are wonderful. Yeah, um, yeah this is your band, um, Joni's Soul, the tribute to Joni Mitchell. Yeah, that's what we're doing now. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to see if we can um, pull up a clip um, in a little while to show everybody. Oh, no, 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 that. no, because I might be naked on it. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> we'll Something's see. never changed. Yeah. Really. sitting in the corner going, oh, my. Yeah. I do if have we, a naked story, but I should go. If we can get a pass for <laughs> censors. <laughs> Ronnie. Get it up there in a few minutes. Lovely to see you, buddy. I'm going to bail out. Oh, I do actually Pete. have to catch that flight. So. Okay. Pete, Pete, Pete. Pete is not a, he's a wonderful man. I oh. love Pete. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I Virtual love hug. Pete. The bromance can Thank continues. you for having me, mate. That's really great. Nothing to yeah, do really with me. And Susan, thank you. Talking so of much. talent. I'm bailing I'm out. In, Susan will I'm stay, in, buddy. I've got a couple more questions for you, Ronnie. I that's been coming no. in. So I wanna I wanna just ask you a few questions if you don't mind. We cool. do a few quick fire fun questions here. What do you think, Ronnie, was the best invention of the twentieth century? Fulham Football Club. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> What's your favorite piece of art? Oh, oh. Can you see this? Uh, um, we've got this on our, our wall. It's um, Joseph Farquharson's, uh, and this piece of art is called um, uh, When West with Evening Glows. Could you see that, Susan, or am I being a bit weird? Yeah. Um... Yeah. Not really. It, it, it's called it's called One West with these evening glows. Yeah. And it is um, uh, it's to me it's everything. Oh, fantastic. Okay, yeah. I'll have I'll have to look that up after because I think I was maybe seeing your television there. I'm not oh, sure. I might be able to get no, it's above <laughs> your television. It's, um, can you see it? Can oh, you see yes, that? Yes, 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 just a bit. Yeah, yeah. It. yeah. Oh wow, okay. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Favorite it's um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. So, Ronnie, you in the present time can go back to you as a 20 year old. You have 30 seconds to give you as a 20 year old some advice. What do you, what advice do you give him? Be yourself, have great fun. Don't ever, ever let anybody influence you from what you feel and think. Was that a bit weird? But that's, no, that's... it was very real. Very, very good advice. Yeah, I mean, that, I really believe that. I yeah. Don't ever, ever, as a kid, ever think that 
what you were thinking is wrong. It's not. Yeah. Fantastic is advice. That weird? No, like, oh, no, no, right. no. <laughs> it's good. There is no right or wrong answer. We're just uh, trying to pass on some mm -hmm. sage words. Um, so what, what, who turns you on or inspires you, Ronnie? Oh, Frank Zappa. I've always loved Frank Zappa. And of course, Johnny Mitchell. Um, uh, uh, yeah, oh, probably Morris Ravel is the big Very one cool. for me. Morris Ravel. Yeah. And who turns you off? <laughs> Um, I, oh, I know what turns me off. Those stupid shows that don't let uh, people uh, embrace their own talent. Yeah, that turns me off. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't like that stuff. That stinks. It yeah. really stinks. You know, it's like, have you any idea, Susan, how brilliant younger people are? Of course you do. Yeah, of course absolutely. you do. Because you're a beautiful yeah. young woman. But you know these, these, you know, these people. Oh, I don't like that. Yeah. Whoops! 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 Sorry. <laughs> that was a, a very, very in-depth answer. So we just credited your bank account with a million quid, Ronnie, and you've got a mobile phone and three minutes to spend it. What do you buy? Pull them a cent and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you'd get that with a million quid? <laughs> Probably not. No, Probably that. not. Well, we've, we've also got another few, a question has come in here from Elmer. He has asked, what's your favourite guitar model, Ronnie? Good question, Elmer. Oh, yeah, great question, Elmer. Um, uh, uh, I, I, I always sort of play a guitar that I had a wild Fender Stratocaster, but there's some uh, some other lovely guitars. Oh, Elmer, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't. Yeah, yeah, it's so hard to say, you know, what you would like. What do you currently use? Uh, I, well, I kind of play a, an old Fender Stratocaster that I've had since I was a young man. Yeah. Okay. Fucking young man. <laughs> oh, no, I've done it. I've not. I've done it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, it's a 1961 Fender Stratocaster that we okay. use. Okay. Um, we were running a bit of a poll earlier on um, Twitter about people, whether they were um, uh, fingers only or puck. And I was going to ask you what your opinion was on that. Oh, crikey. Well, this is weird. I'm going to whip something out on you here, Susan. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a particularly weird style that I play. Yeah. I, um, uh, I play with my fingers and I play with um, uh, uh, Plectrum. And um, Pee Wee Ellis always thought it was the weirdest thing he'd ever seen in his life. So I, I, when I play with the Plectrum, I play with my finger, my, my Second finger, is it? I don't know what you call it. Second finger and, yeah. uh, and the plectrum there. And, but when I'm, and then a lot of the time, I, when I'm playing with my hands, I hide it in this finger and do that. So it's, um, uh, Pee Wee thought it was the funniest thing he'd ever seen in his life. Can you, um, can you just raise your hand a little more just so we can see? I'm yeah. not sure if the guys at him can see that just can to you get show. it? What okay, were... so what I do is, can you see this? Um, I hide, I hide the plectrum in yeah. that finger. Can you see that? I Carly? can see that now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then when I play with the plectrum, I play it there. So I just sort of noodle it around. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very strange technique, yeah. and um, uh, it's a, um, uh, I don't know whether it's good or bad, but that's what I do. <laughs> well, because uh, Eugene has mentioned here um, in the comments, he said, Fenders are favoured by country pickers. Did you ever, oh, sorry, that's a question. Are Fenders favoured by country pickers? 
Did you ever play with Albert Lee? No, never. I don't no. know Albert Lee. No. I know of him, but I don't know him, no. And, and also, I play a Fender guitar. Uh, 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 my favourite guitar was a Gibson 345 that, yeah. I, that I had to sell. And, um, uh, I, and um, yeah, so I don't know. I yeah, don't know. Well, we do have another question in here from actually one of the team. They've said, is Ronnie very, very small or is his furniture very, very big? I'm very, very small. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I, I'm uh, uh, Susan. You got to tell them I'm sat on the floor because that, that was the best light. It's very dark in England today. Yeah, and so um, it's very dark. So that was the only place you could see me. Yeah, and, and yes, I, 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 I can't and substantiate yes, I that. Am very, very small. No, 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 you're not. <laughs> <laughs> But, but listen, Ronnie, it's really, really fun talking to you. But I think we may have managed to get a clip in the meantime of, what, of one of your um, moments on stage in that very special project, Joni's Soul, that you mentioned briefly earlier. Oh, um, that's brilliant, the, Susan. The uh, I, I mean, yeah. that's, uh, I'm really proud of this. Yeah, and I, I just explained to the guys at home that this is a tribute band to Joni Mitchell, um, that, that you're a part of and um, it's very special for you because not only obviously is this a great gig but you are clearly showing that talent runs in your family because on stage beside you we can see that your lovely son Patrick is there too. So um, we're going to um, close it out with that but thank you again Ronnie so much for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure to have you on GCTV Live on Friday. Oh, Susan, it's always so much fun to speak with you. Yeah, likewise. Thank you so much for having me. Thank I appreciate you, Ronnie. It. Cheers. <laughs> See you soon.